cultivate your faith with the pure Word of God. Hello, friends. Peace and grace be multiplied unto you. Welcome to Cultivate Your Faith, a presentation of the pure Word of God. Here we grow by expecting and depending on the sure promises of God to fulfill in a personal way. Here's your host, Dr. Troy Campbell. Now, check this out. You know, there's a there's that passage in the book of Psalm, chapter 139, where the psalmist says that no matter where I go, <laughs> I can't escape your spirit. Can I? Whether it's in heaven or hell or wherever it may be, I cannot escape your spirit. Mm -hmm. So I start this new job. And, you know, this is like a construction job. And so, you know, just imagine the environment there, the, the, the people there, right? And, and so now, check this out, Brother Thor. I go in there. I introduce myself to the crew that I'm going to be a part of. There are several crews. I go around, and my older brother's on the crew with me. So I go around, and I'm introducing myself to all of these, all of the crew members. And, I'm, you know, and, and, and then I come to this one young brother, 19 years of age, 19 years of age. I come up to him. I introduce myself. I shake his. I shake his hand. I say, "My name is ne my name is Nehemiah," and he goes, "Well, my name is Dion, and around here, brother, it's all about Jesus." Wow. I'm like, "Man, you got to be kidding me, <laughs> right?" Yeah. I'm like, "Come on, of all places, Not here, <laughs> yeah. yeah." I'm like, "Man, I'm trying to run from God. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to stay as far away as possible from God. Mm -hmm. And now God is in my home, and now I come to work, and this 19 year old kid." Wherever you go, he's right there with you. Yeah. yeah. This 19 year old kid is in love with Jesus. Anyway, Brother Floyd, check this out. Our crew chief decides to put me with this kid <laughs> to go to and from the work, the job sites <laughs> for the next few months. And this brother, this brother is like, man, I want to have a word of prayer before we go to the job site. <laughs> he says, uh, he plays Christian music. On the radio station, oh. he's always talking about Jesus mm. inside of the excavation and in the trench. He's dropping object lessons. Like he would tap me on my shoulder when we're working in the excavation and he would say, hey, man, you see that ladder? I said, yeah, I see that ladder. What about it? He says, that's Jesus. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he's coaching the whole Jacob story here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he said, that's Jesus. And he's dropping other object lessons. You know, yeah. we, we get off this 90-pound. 90 pound pneumatic tool that that jackhammer to break out you know the concrete and this brother's over there you know lord break up the follow ground of my heart <laughs> i'm like man this bro somebody somebody saved me from this kid yeah. somebody saved me from this kid <laughs> but i want to tell you brother Troy, man that this guy this guy was draped with jesus mm. and jesus looked good on him mm. he loved jesus and, and I, 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 here's the last, the last ex um, um, experience that I, I want to share with you with regards to this young brother named Dion. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we oftentimes also had to do um, these other, well, we, I guess I would consider it like a menial job, you know, a, you know, very, very dirty job. And that was to repair broken sewer lines, mm. repair broken sewer lines. And we would we would often we would often um, rotate who was going to go down and repair the sewer. Well, on this one particular day, we were having to repair this broken sewer main. Dion looks at me and he says, "Uso," or you know, "Us," which is short for "Uso." Yeah. He goes, "It's our turn." And I said, "What?" He said, "Yeah, man, me and you going down." We got to go repair that sewer. <laughs> it's like this brother, man. And, and, and so we descend. We get we get the Tyvek suits on. We have our mask on. You know, we have hip waders on, whatever we need. We descend. We descend down that ladder into that sewage that's still flowing out. Wow. And, I mean, the stench, everything. This young brother steps down in there. And he says, Lord, thank you. 
for stepping into my mess wow. and saving a sinner like me. Man, let me tell you. Praise God. I was standing right there, right there with him when he said it. And it was as if in that mess, I had another encounter with Jesus. And, and, and the tears began to, to stream down my face because I realized that the stuff that I was stepping in, that, that Jesus stepped into our mess, my mess, <laughs> to save me, save to me. save us. And so, and so for Dion to, to say that, I mean, man, and, and I want to share with you, uh, Brother Troy, and, and, and those that will be viewing this, that I'm so thankful that, man, there's absolutely nothing that could stop God from pursuing us. He loves us so much that he is willing, he was willing to go to the lowest depths to rescue and to save us. He was willing to step into our mess, my mess, to save a sinner like me. And it was then that things began to turn. Yeah. Um, I began to, I began to uh, join my family for worship. I began to go to church with my mom. And uh, Happy I, must say, I must say that the pastor and the church family, they were very warm and welcoming and loving. Um, that also that that was also again attractive to me again um, as I saw Jesus in the pastor and in the church family he would come and visit us in our home and um, and all the while uh, my mother her health began to deteriorate and she she went from being uh, you know independent going to her senior citizens, uh, gatherings and food bank and all of that stuff that she loved to do. Right. Um, but now she became chief. She, she had a fall and broke her hip while she was visiting family in Hawaii. They had to, they had to bring her back here. And that's when her health even began to go downhill more, more quickly. Right. And so she, she went, she, she became wheelchair bound. And then she became bedridden. But Brother Thoy, the, the entire time, she never lost her hold and her faith upon God. And, and even while she was, you know, her body was racked with pain, she was going through all this stuff physically. Um, man, just to see her love and her, and her passion for God and for her family. Um, so she, she stayed with us for the last three years of her life. And my wife became her, my wife became her caregiver and took care of my mom. Um, you know, it's, it's, and, and we could never, we could never repay right. all that our parents did for us. Right. And that's a nice way to put it. We can never repay all what our parents did for us. Because, you know, your mom who have had, you know, as you've alluded to, a good life, but with some struggles and she, one of her struggle was that she was never going to let you go. And she, she decided to, 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 to stay with you, to, to go, go to your house and live because he, she realized that she needed to be close to you because you, she wanted to save you for, for, for God's kingdom. And absolutely. Absolutely. And then, uh, Dion, Yes, he's something Dion. else. He's something else. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I thank you, man. You, you, you've saved me. This story is saving, helping my salvation, and um, and I'm sure a lot of view, our viewers are gonna appreciate it. I, I, I really appreciate what you've shared, and and there's nothing, nothing more vivid than the fact that Christ, the darling of heaven. You know, um, step <laughs> down into our sewage. Yes, yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. To save Thank us. you, Jesus. Yes, and he he did. And you know, my my mother, she loved all of her kids, all of her all of her kids, all of her grandkids, her great grandkids, her great great grandkids, and she prayed for all of us, you know, by name. Um, and the beautiful thing is, even my even our daughter Lala, she loved Lala. Lala was about, you know, 
two or three at the time. Um, and by the time, you know, um, my mother's health really got to a point where she had to be on hospice. Um, in December of 2000, 2009, my mother, my mother took her rest and we buried her. We buried her in January of 2010. And here's, here's the, the beautiful thing, um, Brother Troy, is that, as you mentioned, you know, my mother prayed and she wouldn't let, she wouldn't let go um, of her hold on me. And she would constantly lift me up in prayer, my, me and my family. And she did not see with her physical eyes her son come back to Jesus. Mm. But I believe that she saw it by faith. Because she was a friend of God. Yeah. She believed and claimed the promises of God. And I believe that her prayers, her prayers are along with many others and many other mothers who pray for their children are retained in golden bowls in heaven. And God, God remembers those prayers. And so it was in, it was in February of 2010 that my wife and I got married. It was in, it was in March of 2010 that I was rebaptized and my wife was baptized for the first time. And it was, it was all because I believe because, you know, there's, there's a, there's a beautiful, in a, in a book called Christ object lessons. I, the story of the prodigal son, there's a, there, and, I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, but there's a, there's a, a little sentence in there that I love from that, from that, from that chapter um, of the prodigal son, of course, it's based upon Luke 15 right. where the author writes that when the prodigal leaves or when the young man leaves, God sets in motion ways in which to bring the prodigal back. And so all along the way, while I was in this, for, for several years in this, in this dark space, God never, God never left me. God was always there. God was always in pursuit. This God of love was always in pursuit, sending different people, connecting me with different people, sending my mom. Now here's the amazing thing as well. We thought, we thought that mom was coming into our home, that we would, we, that we would be her caregivers when in reality, God sent mom to our home to be our caregivers and bring us back to Jesus. And, and then after that, brother Troy, um, became a, you know, uh, part of the church, the local church here in Washington, uh, got ordained as an elder of the church here and conducted evangelistic meetings, um, here as well. And, and God blessed with souls that <laughs> were won to Jesus. Praise God. It was, it's all him. And then the conference took notice of what was happening. Yeah. And so, you know, I went in and had a meeting long, long story short. Uh, my wife and I, we just felt, we felt this, uh, you know, uh, impressed, you know, to, to, to give ourselves to ministry, to give ourselves to God, to be used of him in whatever capacity, whatever way he wanted to use us. Mm -hmm. So we went and we met with the ministerial director at the time. He was also um, the director of evangelism for the Washington conference. I expressed to him, I said, Hey, you know, I've always had a passion for sharing the word for evangelism. Um, you know, can, how can we serve? And he said, well, right now we don't have an opening in evangelism, but, We've been praying for this, for this one area in Washington state for over 10 years. Would you be, would you be interested in planting a church there? Wow. So my wife and I, we said, okay, let us, let us give us a little bit of time to pray about it, mm -hmm. to think about it. We came back and we said, yep, we're willing to do it. So in 2014, we planted a church out here in Maple Valley. It's an area that, that did not have any, you know, basically um, no Adventist presence there, right. um, at least in that area. However, 
So in 2014, we planted a church there. And in 2000, I believe it's 17, 2018, it became a full-fledged church within the Washington Conference. And um, and then after that, after that, um, you got to hear this story. So <laughs> there, there was a this 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 passion for evangelism um, just wouldn't. I mean, it, it would not subside. It would not go away at all. In fact it became even more, um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's just, it's like, it's in my blood. It's in my, it's in my system. And I, right. and I, and I expressed that again to the conference and said, Hey, um, you know, we planted this church and I believe that God wants to do even more, um, on a, on a, you know, on another level. And so can we, you know, is there any way that we can, uh, become a part of the evangelism team? Right. Um, I met with the president in the fall of 2000, 2019, Brother Troy, 2019. I met with the, the team. By the way, I'd, I had already left my job uh, mm-hmm. full time in, um, yeah. you know, from Seattle City Light to do full time ministry with the conference. Um, they picked me up as a Bible worker, as a lay pastor mm-hmm. and um, and also, you know, to as a church planter. Right. So I met with the president. 2019. This was, I believe, in October, November, somewhere in the fall. And we had had initial, again, conversations leading up to this meeting about my desire to be in evangelism. This particular meeting, he said, he shares with me, he said, Nehemiah, you know, I've talked with, I've talked with our team. I've talked with the administration. I've talked with our treasury. And we just don't have it in the budget to bring in another evangelist because we already have one. Yeah. He said, we just don't have enough budget. And then he said, he shares this. He says, unless you're, unless you're able to write up right. a, a check for 500,000, then we might be able to do something. Right. And I thought to myself, 500,000. Wow. So he said, Hey, um, but I'm willing to give you recommendation, uh, you know, to other, um, you know, it is written amazing facts. And also he asked, they also, um, had me interview with two other districts in our conference mm-hmm. to pastor in two other districts. Uh, so my wife and I, we went ahead and interviewed. We said, okay, you know what? We'll, we'll interview. We'll, we'll, we'll put Isaac on the altar, right. if you will. What's most important to us, mm-hmm. what we believe is our passion, we'll, and, and what we love the most. We'll put that on the altar, and we'll just. When I went home, I was—I'll be honest with you—I was disappointed, and I was—and I was having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. I was just saying, you know, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. What's going on here, um, Lord? When I get home, my wife says, uh, "Honey, we got to pray about this," and she says, "We need to pray that God." that God will provide the funds for you to go into evangelism. And check this out, Troy. She even said this. She said, after we interviewed with one of the districts, she said, yes, we interview with them. But guess what? We're not going to end up in any of those districts because you're going to end up in evangelism. I said, whoa. Wow. You're kind that's of, that's, you that's pretty bold. To, right? Yeah. I said, that's pretty bold and audacious, right? <laughs> and... So we prayed. Long story short, January of 2020, and I still got the voice message, and I still got the text. Amen. Where the president says, hey, are you able to come in to meet with us tomorrow morning? Or this, you know, Mm. and I said, sure, I'll come in. So I go in, and there is, there's the president, the vice president, and 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 others that are in the room and he 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 says to me he goes are you ready to pastor um one of those districts the districts um one uh at a, in a district i said yes whatever whatever the lord whatever the lord says we're willing to do it and he starts to chuckle and he starts to laugh and he says i'm just kidding i'm just joking you're not you're not going to go and pastor any church and i said okay so What's up? 
He said that there was a dear saint, a church member, that had passed away and had left their estate to the conference and the funds. Check this out, Troy. Specifically earmarked for evangelism. Praise God. And it was more than the five hundred thousand that we needed. That he that he that he spoke of. Mm. <laughs> I mean, and God came to. He says, "So we want to welcome you to the evangelism department, to the evangelism team." What a journey! And so, so brother, right now, um, since since February of 2020. I have served in the role of Associate Director of Evangelism and Evangelist and Pastor here in the Washington Conference. And I, I want to share with you that, that that's, again, you talk about faith, um, faith experience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thankful to God for my wife who prayed. I'm thankful to God for Pastor Rome and mm -hmm. some of these other brothers that, you know, that uh, are part of my prayer circle. Right. Um, they're my accountability and prayer partners. And, man, I have expressed to them. I've shared with them. Check this out. I've shared with them. Man, some of my frustrations, some of the things that, you know, I was experiencing, some of the things I was feeling, you know, it was a safe space for us to 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 unload and, and, and to share. Right. Man, I remember Rome said, bro, he said, God's got your back. Mm. He says, you are going to become the event, one of the evangelists for the Washington Conference. Mm. You can bank on it. And I said, okay, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, and it and it's happened, and I, yeah. and all I can say, brother Troy, is that since that time, even when COVID hit in March, I was installed in February. COVID hit in March, and I want to give God all the praise and all the glory, because what happened after that was I I asked the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, I need your creative and innovative mind to show me ways in which to do evangelism, outreach, and soul winning in the midst of this pandemic. Right. And I want to share with you, Brother Troy, that, man, the Holy Spirit came through. He showed up and showed out. Mm -hmm. The first couple of families that I was studying with, because they shut down everything and because we couldn't hold bap baptisms um, in, in baptistries, right. guess what? We held up. Well, I, did, I did several baptisms virtually. We called it baptisms, <laughs> where people set up their camera in their home. Amazing. And they were baptized in their bathtub, and we mm. did it virtually. Mm. We did it virtually. One, did it, one, one family did it in their bathtub, uh, a husband, wife, and their daughter. Right. And then another family, they took a, a, a swimming pool, a, a, a swimming pool in the backyard of their home, and they filled it up, and they were baptized husband, wife, and two teenage daughters were baptized virtually, which shows us which shows us that the, that that the work of the Holy Spirit cannot be stopped. Cannot, no matter what. Cannot. Even not even a pandemic can stop the work of God in our lives. No. In our lives. Amen. I I I, I Nimaya. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all you've said. You've poured out into me. You've poured out into the audience. I, I, I implore you to continue to, to minister. This is what God has planned for you. You told us from your humble beginnings and your struggle with 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 trouble. <laughs> and and yes. you told us how uh how your mother pursued you and, and, and prayed and and you told us how God uh brought you back into ministry and how he's using you in a powerful Amen. way. You know, as you told your story, the song came to my mind. Uh, paraphrase it says uh, Jesus didn't want heaven without us mm. so he brought heaven down he came himself into a mess thank you Jesus and, and save us um, we're going to have to have another episode of, 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 of this this is so beautiful and, praise uh, the Lord I, I know God is blessing your ministry and, and and perhaps we, we, we can talk more about that in, in, Absolutely. Another, in another time. But I'm going to give you one final word for, for the <laughs> audience before you, 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 you leave. I, my system is shutting down. I don't know why. 
but um, I give you one final word before before we close. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And I'd like to the word I'd like to share is found in Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seventeen. Yeah. He that is in Christ mm. is a new creature or creation. Thank you. Behold, all, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so I just want to, I want to, I want to encourage and um, uplift and affirm. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're exempt um, from, from struggles and trials and, yeah. uh, and, and battles. I mean, we still have our ups and downs. We still go through it, but I'm thankful right. that Jesus is with us right. in the struggle. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Mimaya, for sharing. And again, please continue. God has called you, and 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 He's right there with you. And, and Thank you. We have, along with this ministry, you know, we have a, a work to do, and and we thank God for His work in our lives. You know, uh, Amen. My friends, uh, I I encourage you to to go on our YouTube channel, cultivate your faith. Uh, YouTube channel, and 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 Nehemiah mentioned his his brother in ministry, Rome. We have an episode out there with <laughs> him, and um, we continue to do things for Christ. And so, please like this episode and, and share with your friends as we continue to spread the word of God. Amen. Thank you for 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 watching and for listening this episode. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Cultivate Your Faith. We cultivate our faith by feeding on the Word of God. By sharing we receive, by receiving we grow. Will you share as you have received? Join us next week as we continue our journey. Go to cultivateyourfaith.com to sign up to our email list, subscribe for new episodes, and find the resources mentioned in the show notes. Until next time.